Hello everyone. I am going to make a presentation on SIS design, safety instrumented system design. This topic will be on SIS work process. This is a little bigger topic, that's why it is split into two parts. And I am going to describe about part one here. The video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly watch and subscribe to the channel. SIS work process, we'll just understand about the SIS stan design standards. International Electrotechnical Commission, IEC, has 61511 and 61508, these two standards, specifically for the safety instrumented system. And 61511 is a safety instrumented system for the process industry sector, defines the steps for SIS design. This is an international standard having uh, being applied uh, almost all over the globe except for few regions like americas and maybe in canada there they, they have equivalent standard known as ANSI, american national standards institution and instrument society of america isa these two together have formed a standard s84 so this is an equivalent standard which is alternate to iec international technical Commission standards sys work process steps Actually, it is having four different phases. In this uh, presentation, we are going to describe about two first two phases. Just uh, phase one is layer of analysis. Phase two is production layer design. Okay, each phase has multiple steps. Uh, we'll describe over the steps over here. First one, uh, identify and define assets. This is PHA and low pass study. PHA stands for process hazard analysis layer protection analysis so these two studies will be taken up in the first step second step this is for identify and evaluate highest risk and target factor scenarios and when the lopa is being developed there are many factors to be considered which is affecting the is affecting the plant and the, eventually there could be some hazard happening so uh, this is a layer of protection analysis workbook. Uh, this is describing the scenario and description of the undesired consequence. What can happen? So that can lead to a hazard. And next column it's a LOPA target factor. Usually the target factor of six is being arrived. Some companies have a different standard, but this is a general one. And uh, in initiating factor, which event can do this particular cause. So this is an initiating event factor an enabling factor and uh, probability of exposure how many people will be exposed into in that region of the process area and all and in the on the right side we have different protection layers and uh, the credits associated which can be taken for each protection layer one for bpcs basic process control system another one is uh, operation alarms operator response to alarm and next is safety instrumented system layer and further we have mechanical protection layers like pressure relief pulse, rupture disc etc so all those things will be credited and each of by which it is able to eliminate the hazard so by that uh, in the, the target will be achieved so on in total they have to uh, arrive at the target factor of this one six so each uh, scenario will have some credit and this one uh, we have, you have to understand when we do the detailed calculations so it is part of a detailed technical analysis study by the standard people so on the third step is perform risk analysis and protection strategy this is the third step in the uh, low power analysis fourth is select alternative protection methodology and document them these are the four steps available in the first phase and this is low power book what we saw earlier and the second phase is protection layer design first low power is uh, analyzed and uh, the target factors and other uh, things have been taken care in the next uh, phase the protection layer design is being taken up in this one the step 5 is for define and design instrumented protection system see in this uh, presentations we are focusing about the safety instrumented system so this is an instrumented protection layer so always we look into the topics and discussions on the instrumented protection systems and sixth one is verify instrument protection system design uh, first uh, fifth step it is a uh, define and design of the ips sixth one is verify the instrument protection system design so whatever is designed is whether it is meeting the meeting the requirement this will be done in this sixth step and seventh step it is develop instrumented protection system operating methods and training 
So we will go over about the detailed descriptions of each step in the following slides. And eighth one is develop instrumented protection system application software. The, all the applications are running in the Micropass based high speed processes known as PLC. So it is having a particular uh, type of application software. So that has to be developed. Uh, as I told earlier, it is having two more phases, third and fourth phases to be discussed in the next presentation. Okay, the first uh, two phases and the steps, eight steps will be discussed in detail in the coming slides. Okay, step one, who will do what? Associated plant process engineer responsible to lead safety analysis. This is about the first step of this one, identify and define the hazards. Okay, we are talking the details about this part, first step. So, the process engineer is responsible to lead safety analysis, evaluates alternatives against the site selection issues, document expert plan for SIS, LOPA, process design and process reviews, supplies input documents, uh, I mean the documents may be different kinds like uh, first we will be starting with the process piping and instrumentation diagram PNID. And there could be process flow diagram, there could be control narratives and there, there is some safety analysis and those kind of documents has to be uh, inputted in this step. Identifies hazardous process envelopes for target factor identification. As I told earlier, each of the process area is bound for some kind of hazard that has to be identified and the, uh, how much uh, target we have to achieve that has to be identified and updates low power target factors responsible for initial process safety strategy development plan. Uh, he is the one responsible for uh, initial process safety strategy. Okay, in the second step, identify high target factor scenarios. Uh, process engineer again, he is the one leading this activity. Use the results from step one, identify and refine low power target factors. And if the answer is yes, communicate the need for a hazard. Hazard, hazard stands for hazardous operability study. Again, this will be done by a team of process experts, chemical engineers, highly <coughs> skilled chemical engineers. There could be some subject matter expertise in the particular process area and uh, process uh, safety engineers who are having thorough knowledge about the chemicals being used and the reactions that are being happening in the particular uh, process or overall to the overall plant and uh, there could be uh, instrumentation engineers or automation engineers who are responsible for the plant maintenance, instrumentation maintenance, etc. Responsible for initiation and completion of preliminary structured scenario analysis for the most hazardous scenarios, target factor of 8 or higher. We saw in the target factor assist, this is as I told you, this is differs from companies. But uh, target factor 8 or higher, wherever it is required, those kind of scenarios will be taken up and discussed in detail. And initiates as of if required. So when the target factor is going uh, 8 or higher, as of will be required to be done. This is one, you can say one, one factor, one uh, this thing, uh, higher than the LOPA. Responsible for initiation and completion of Consequence and frequency analysis for most hazardous scenarios. So, they will study and then the consequence and frequency for each, uh, uh, each event kind of happening, those things has to be analyzed. Initiates and completes LOPA evaluation for most hazardous scenarios including updating LOPA documentation. So, this is one particular scenario, this is one example. They have to analyze in different uh, angles and different type of scenarios. What could happen? It could be from any pump hazardous scenario, or it could be a failure of one motor, or uh, suppose it is one motor is coupled, coupled with a turbine or something, the failure of the coupling, or failure of bearings, or um, there could be a switch gear getting tripped, that could be one scenario, or the pump is running and the output pressure is not developing, either due to the impeller problem on the pump or it could be due to the suction is not adequate like those kind of different kind of scenarios which can, which can lead to the hazardous event those uh, things will be discussed and all uh, different scenarios and different uh, safety targets achievement requirements will be detailed and analyzed and they have to be documented in the LOPA documentation 
In the step 3, which is finish risk analysis and protections, the process engineers updates the LOPA here, facilitates planning and execution to identify and evaluate remaining hazardous scenarios using LOPA. This is a, an elaborate study which may go, which may go for months or couple of months depending on the size of the plant, size of the process, etc. So they will go through the analysis. Responsible for incorporating results of detailed analysis into LOPA. Ensures all LOPA gaps are closed and protection layers have been incorporated into final design documents. Aim of this process engineers and their team, there could be some LOPA teams also. Their team is to achieve all the, it's about the target factor, no? Just to, they will be going over the different layers of protections which is available, which can be incorporated in the particular facility and try to achieve this number. This is their fundamental study. And wherever, that, that's what we have mentioned, wherever there is any gap is there, target factor is not meeting to the required one. So there could be some requirement to install additional instrumentation or additional mechanical protection layers, etc. Okay. Fourth step, in the select protections and document the process engineer initiates the drive to identify the one solution to be implemented there could be multiple solutions to mitigate one scenario but uh, he has to analyze and come out with the best one to have a minimum hardware instrumentation as well as mechanical protections to achieve the target as is manufacturing engineer responsible in making the sys list initiates and ensures completion of the necessary re reviews Initiate step then works with manufacturing rep to ensure section 1 of SRS form to complete. SRS stands for safety requirement specifications. This is the one document to be developed after completion of the LOPA study and all. So he has to ensure that first section is to be updated. Provides physical property data for instrument protection system instruments. This is what type of sensors to be used which is applicable for the particular process technology etc okay these are the four steps now we are going to the second phase which is protection layer design so we are going to the second phase with the detailed descriptions what has to be done in this in this one so here it is uh, comprehended with for four steps between five to eight uh, sys is an independent protection system bpcs protection functions are also independent independent protection instrumented protection systems are instrumented protection systems so this is an ips BPCS protection functions are also IPS. In the design phase, the manufacturing representative, representative engineer, process engineer, uh, he is the one, resolves the plan process engineer related document deficiencies. There are any uh, deficiencies in documentation. He is the one because manufacturing engineer is the one responsible for the particular process area. So he will be having much uh, knowledge about that area. So he will have to review and verify any deficiencies. And this also planned process engineer related sharing deficiencies. As we saw in the LOPA workbook, there are different uh, layers available to mitigate the scenario, hazardous scenarios. So there could be some mistakes, there could be some deficiencies. So those things have to be addressed by the manufacturing engineer. Review and agree to the book of conventions and function library. So there has to be a uniform code, uniform book of conventions like uh, notations, and the PNAD markups, etc., that has to be uniform across the plant. There could be different consultants and contractors, there may be some difference between them with respect to the application, with respect to the geographical location, and all. So, that has to be uniform for the particular plant area. Associates with instrument designer on developing the conceptual test plan and ensures communication of changes between instrument and electrical disciplines and plant automation personnel or maintenance personnel. There could be some kind of uh, you know, conflict and difference between one, one discipline with other discipline that has to be resolved. So this is the manufacturing process engineer's responsibility and assist the process engineer for doing all such activities. Assembles the documentation necessary to determine economics are optimized. As I said earlier, there could be multiple ways to protect and mitigate a particular scenario. So they have to analyze and come out with the best possible solution to have minimum instrumentation as well as minimum mechanical protections and ensure the safety is achieved. So by that they, there could be some iterations to come out to the best possible mitigation strategy whereby the economics is to be optimized. 
assembles the documentation for confirming the safety coaches concurrence of design there could be safety coaches review so they have to uh, review and uh, approve the uh, air protection analysis and other instrument protection system design and all that has to be obtained and uh, this is one of the requirement works with the plant maintenance and process automation teams in completing the validation and proof test procedures the validation and proof test are the mandatory requirements for the safety instrumented system so whenever uh, the new plant is being developed new facility uh, is developed with the safety instrumented system the validation procedure and proof test for the instruments being installed has to be developed ensures documentation is assembled and delivered to plant operations in approved format each plant will have the philosophy or standard approved standard documentations with respect to their company standards or the national standards that documentation has to be assembled facilitates development of specific operating procedures with the plant technical authority and operating the plant role so um, we have to develop the operating procedures as well uh, which requires the support from the plant technical authority there could be a technical, technical team uh, responsible for the particular process they could be sitting in the same plant area or they could be working in a remote location but the manufacturing process engineers has to work with them and ensure that every this, this thing has been taken care of ensures training materials are assembled and delivered to the plant operations in the approved format as per the plant standards so the operations need to be aware of the all type of instrumentation all type of safety instrumented system and mechanical protection layers protections because they are the one going to operate there they are the one going to be available 24 by 7 in the plant and taking care of the plant operations so their shutdown procedures for the each of the equipment and any during emergency what has to be taken care those kind of emergency procedures everything has to be developed so that that has to be developed and every company will follow a different standard so that has to follow the specific standard for the particular um, for the particular company particular location ensures maintenance training materials are assembled and delivered to the maintenance personnel also the maintenance team has to be aware of the and have the thorough knowledge about the installations across the plant so that they can do the maintenance at required time and in a proper way that has to be ensured 